and like introduce yourselves and your um, your name, accelerator, company, and then we're gonna go back around and talk really quickly about your story and how kind of how you got into the accelerator and and um, what made you sort of feel like you stood out. So, go for it. Um, I'm Crystal Huang and um, co-founder of Pro Sky. We went through 500 startups. Um, we were in batch 11, and uh, we have a HR tech platform called ProSky. Uh, we ended up raising 2.5 mil after the batch was done, um, and then we're looking forward to raise Series A end of this year. My name is Ethan Austin. Uh, I went through a program actually called Accelerate Labs in Chicago in 2010 that eventually got acquired by Techstars and became Techstars Chicago. The uh, company was called Give Forward. Uh, we help people uh, raise money for loved ones' medical expenses, so like medical crowdfunding, if you guys are familiar with that. And what else? We ended up raising about $7 million. Um, company just got acquired the other day by a competitor. I wish it, I wish it was something else. But, uh, um, and, now I, and now I actually work at Techstars. Should we do like a mic for the left and whatever? Um, <laughs> hey guys, uh, my name is Khalil. I'm founder and CEO of a company called Hixo. Uh, we actually uh, just in the, on the second floor here, um, and we produce a Fitbit for boxing and mixed martial arts, and we produce a group solution that is a gamified fitness. So everyone wears a pair of our sensor, and there's a big dashboard where everyone sees the results in real time. Um, so we do a little bit of B2C and B2B sales um, at the moment. And then we raised uh, so far in our lifetime about uh, 700K, uh, went through both uh, YC and 500. Um, and we're a team of six people. Actually, you have a, a few of them uh, at the back. Hi, my name is Doug. I am the CEO of Influx, uh, YC W16. We make motion capture clothing for the masses. It's a technology platform for uh, virtual reality, uh, motion capture, physical therapy. We have $14 million in purchase orders, and we're going for our, uh, Series A end of this year. Hi, I'm Matt Ang, uh, co-founder of PressGuy. We went through everything, but we are an HR platform that um, focuses on pre-hire evaluations and also succession planning for your employees um, post-hire. So that's what we do. Cool, awesome. So I'm gonna go back around, and I think one of the, um, I, I think they all wanna know your story, but I know we don't have like a lot of time. So if you guys want to sort of summarize a bit, and you know, for the, especially for the part that, you know, how you got into Accelerate, because we know the odds of getting into these are so hard, and what did you think made you stand out? So. Give us a little bit of background and story, um, maybe like a couple of minutes so we can kind of keep things on time. I'll do it with Matt because it's actually a really funny story. So um, we started ProSky together and um, I think, you know, it was going well, but I was kind of struggling. I, I have two kids and um, I was struggling because I was feeling guilty because obviously I was bootstrapping it. I was being a mom and... It was, it was hard, you know, and um, we had applied to 500, and at that time, Matt was still working at Marriott, and I remember we were on the phone, and I was complaining about my life, and he was complaining about having no windows in his office, <laughs> and literally about that, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know if we should continue, you know, you want to... <laughs> But what, what were you complaining about during that time? <laughs> yeah, I was being a baby about my office, having no windows. Um, I was working late hours, working 7 to 9 every day. Um, just didn't really feel like I had a life. Um, and I wasn't super invested in what I was doing. Um, I studied finance, ended up going to finance. So um, I knew I always wanted to do something else. Um, and uh, an opportunity came along, Crystal ended up applying for 500, she gave me a call one night, I think it was like 8.30, and I was sitting in my office, um, sulking and crying about my life, and um, she's like, guess what, we just got into 500 no, startups. No, this went for like 30, 40 minutes, we're like, oh my gosh, everything sucks. That's right. And literally, I had my laptop in front of me, and then all of a sudden, an email came, it's like, congratulations, you've been accepted to 500 startups. And I was like, we, oh my gosh, 
they just said we were, you know, accepted to 500 stars. And he's like, yes, I quit. <laughs> but I was professional. I gave him like a one month thing. But... There, was, there was no one else in the office at that time. So yeah, I was, was the him. last one in there. So it was good. It worked out well. And we we're super excited. Got it to 500. And this is the rest is history, I guess. That's great. So we were, uh, we had bootstrap for, for almost two years by the time we got accepted to Accelerate Lab. Um, hello? Um, so we had, we had bootstrap for almost two years uh, by the time we got accepted to Accelerate Labs. And I think, you know, that first year, you know, there was nothing like, this. 2010, there was, you know, I don't even know if 500 start, like, startups existed at that point. They started in 2010. 2010, yeah, right? So it, was, so it was the first thing to come to Chicago. There was, there was no accelerator, accelerators in Chicago at that point. And so there was like 500, 600 applications to this. And we were a social impact company, which, which you know, the likely, who had heard of social impact even in 2010? It wasn't like a thing. Um, and we were doing crowdfunding, right? Like, you know, we launched in 2008, Kickstarter didn't exist yet. Like. Like we, we were calling it peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So it, it wasn't like crowdfunding hadn't exploded yet either. So it was just like we were really early. And, you know, I think there's so much luck and you know, it's so arbitrary, like who gets into these programs. Um, and it certainly was make or break for us. Like we went from here to here going through the program. But like the only reason we got in, honestly, I asked the guy running it um, was a guy named Sam Yagen. He was the founder of OkCupid. Okay and the only reason I think we got in is, is because his wife uh, worked at McDonald's corporate and she had a coworker whose cousin's like niece's roommate was sick and they wanted to like create an online fundraising page. And like the only way you did that back then was like you had, a, you had to create a blog and add like a PayPal widget and no one knew how to do that. And they like, hey Sam, like you're a nerd, you work with computers, like can you do that? And he's like, what? You know, like, WTF, like, no, I can't do that. Um, and that had happened like six months earlier. So the only reason we literally got in is because he saw the exact problem we were solving. Um, and had that not happened, I don't know, I don't, I don't think we would have gotten in the program. Um, yeah, for us, it's, it's kind of like a similar story, but it happened up north in Canada when there is not a lot of funding. Um, and... Um, there's actually a lot of government funding, which is very long to get, and you know, it's usually a loan, and it involves like you know putting your student, you know, trying to hide your student loans from them. Anyways, um, all of that to say that uh, we basically kind of like bootstrap for a couple of years, and I didn't know when we started. We started the company in Toronto. Um, I didn't know anything about accelerators or you know hardware revolution or any of that. Um, and then we did like a lot of programs. We did like three small programs, like, you know, uh, some of them were like a few months, others were, um, you know, just like a few weekends, uh, because, you know, we didn't know anything about business. Like we knew product, we knew technology, but we didn't know anything about how, how to build the business, make sure you have like a demand for your product, et cetera. So, uh, these programs became very redundant very quickly. And it was always like, you know, we, we used to laugh, or actually laugh at this today, but back then, you never really knew if you, sh you should trust the person who's telling you the advice. It's like, yeah, you know, I had like three startups before that all failed, and here's exactly how you should build yours. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Um, so at one point, uh, you know, someone talked to us about a program called Founder Institute, uh, which is a very similar program uh, as here, was, as what Melinda has here. And, uh, you know, I remember my co-founder Alex being like, really, man, like another program? Plus this one, you actually have to pay for it? And they take like 3% of your company? Like, are you sure you want to do that? Like, yeah, I think that's a good one, though. Like, they have, you know, pretty solid mentors. And it was always about, like, who really teaches you how to build a business. Um, and I went to this session, and uh, the guy presenting was very charismatic, he's actually a Techstars grad. Um, um, he built this company called um, uh, Pro Provender. I don't know, okay, Techstars company. Um, and, um, and he was like, all right, whatever I'm telling you guys, you shouldn't listen to it, because in this world, you should only listen to people that are millionaires. And I was like, yes, okay, 
you speak my language. Um, so, you know, we, we kind of like, we did that. And that program led us to this whole world of accelerators and, you know, how uh, there's always, you know, the three main accelerators are kind of like represented here. And, you know, it was always like, uh, this whole thing was like, oh my God, well, you know, you have to be a U.S. company and that has to take off like crazy. Uh, I, I didn't even lose time to apply. Uh, and we were like, you know, fuck this, like we'll apply, you know. Uh, and we applied to a bunch of them, got refused to a, a bunch of them. Uh, but YC actually uh, called us for an interview. Um, so we were like all excited and, you know, we told everyone around us, hey, you know, we're going to the YC interview. And I was like trying to leverage that to get more money from the government, you know. Um, and then, you know, we really went there, but we were very early. We only had a prototype. Um, and we rehearsed like crazy this interview. Like we found all the resources online and we called like all the alumni that we had in our network and they drilled us and we sucked and it was very bad. Um, but we became very good at it and uh, we really killed the interview, which I think is really the reason why we were able to, you know, go from the interview to, uh, the, you know, the finish line. Um, and really at the end, what I think you know, seal the deal is the low amount of money that we use to create the product, which was kind of like their success metric. They, they like the team, you know, um, you don't ever really know when they accept you, why they accept you, by the way, like you can ask them after, but even then you're like, yeah, I don't know if it's really because of that, uh, you know, uh, but uh, I think, you know, I remember them talking about, um, you know, being able to accomplish a lot with not a lot of money has a lot of value because Obviously, you're able to, to do a lot more output if I give you a dollar than this other team who, you know, takes a lot more money to do the same output. So, um, I think that's what they, uh, they chose us. Uh, so, I was actually in Chicago for a number of years. Um, I was designing, I was a chief engineer. Actually, I was working in Wooddale, if you know, know that area. Uh, yeah, Wooddale. Um, but anyway, I was, uh, I was working at Harley-Davidson. And I transitioned over to design engines, and I became a chief engineer and launched or designed and went to mass production two engine programs, and that that helped the company go IPO. So I got a lot of cash out of that, and then I dumped a lot of it into Nflux. We we bootstrapped Nflux for about three years um, because developing clothing with motion sensors to track the entire body's movement uh, is way more difficult than I thought it would be, and I kind of wish it weren't so difficult a lot of the time. Um, but, so, you know, I, I was dumping my money in. My other co-founder, Mickey, uh, PhD economist, he was making a quarter mil a year, and he was dumping a lot of money into it as well. Um, but it's, we really didn't know what we were doing, actually. Um, but you know we had a cool, a compelling um, prototype, and I, I remember on the applications they they said like, you know what's what have you hacked? Um, I think they 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 definitely invest in teams, of course, because our prototype still sucked a lot after three years. Um, like really, it was still really bad. Um, but you know the core tech sort of worked, so you know it, it was really about the team we had. I had four. I have four founders because we're a hardware and software startup, um, and each one had a specific domain expertise. And so I was pitching it as like we have a really uh, well-rounded team uh, that's really insane. We work all you know all hours a night. We spend all of our money on this type of thing. We just convinced them that we were passionate and that uh, we had talked to enough users and and had practiced enough of, I think, YC's uh, methodologies of how to create good products and things like that, and, and how to uh, uh, really determine like if you have product to market fit or you're at least heading in the right direction. But I think it's really about the team and, and really just how insane you are, I think, okay. about how passionate, passionate you are about the problem you're solving. Um, but yeah, I, I started Nflux because um, I got injured and I was trying to get better um, and at the time, I had these big motion sensors we developed uh, that were sticking onto cars, but then we thought, why don't we just put them all over my body and, and uh, you know, 
basically create our own like coach AI interface. Um, and so we did, and we saw, and it was a really shitty demo and everything. But like, yeah, so we talked to some people they thought it was compelling, so we kept going at it. Um, and then, yeah, it's just talking to users, and we just kept doing that and, and went from there. I think I'm good. Do you want me to talk about stuff? If you want. No, I think do I'm good. Want, do you want to talk? <laughs> I'm good. Okay, all right. So, um, Doug here, we actually just literally pulled, he, we just saw him today and asked him to be honest. That's why his picture is like on top. <laughs> he was at a very last minute. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, yeah, we're like, we have a YC founder in house. Let's just I, get him on and he, he agreed. So isn't that cool? Um, all right, so my next question will be, why one, you know, why a topic seller there? Uh, or do you have an opinion about it? Because I definitely have my opinions about it. But of course, I think you guys have your opinions. So I would love to hear sort of your take on, you know, why a top accelerator versus a local and what's the difference? Um, just giving people an idea of, of uh, versus, you know, like what are your opinions about it, basically? But I can't, you know, I can, I can speak to tech stars and, and I can't speak to local accelerators, but I think a lot of it's going to to um, the, the level of the, like the mentors who, you know, the, the, guys who, the guys and gals in the room who are millionaires, right? Like, so when we got into Techstars, you know, our first mentor had built uh, Internet Explorer and taken the company public for like a billion dollars or so. And, and, and like, we met like the, the founder of Priceline and like these people who had done things. Um, and I think my guess, and I don't, I can't really, I don't really know for sure, but I think with a lot of the top accelerators, you're going to get those top mentors who not only, are, you know, have been successful, but, but can open doors for you. Um, and, and I think that's maybe what matters the most is that, you know, everyone's really smart. Everyone works hard. I think that's a given, like no matter what, uh, everyone still needs help. Right, and no matter what, like you can't succeed unless people are willing to help you. Um, and so, those people who are bought into those programs, um, you know, YC, Techstars, and 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 500, we've been, they've been doing it for a very, very long time, and they have a lot of loyalty in those networks. And so, those people, it's a community. They want to help out the next batch. And so, I think that's just some of just the longevity of the programs in itself. Um, you know, I think matters a lot. Uh, when they're making those intros. Yeah, no, totally. It's definitely the same for me. I mean, so our, our, our partners at, uh, at Y Combinator were uh, Michael Seibel and Justin Kahn. And they just has, had sold their company called Twitch to uh, Amazon for 970 million. So you had like either them or, uh, you know, some guy from Montreal that sold his company to a used sells car, whatever. So obviously, you know, the level of mentors was completely different on just like a whole other level. Um, and, you know, good feedback is kind of like a scarce resource. And bad feedback is, is, is very dangerous because it gets steered you, you know, it, you get steered in a completely different trajectory. I, I had, I remember, I had uh, some people who are just like, you have to understand everything about accounting and you know you have to you know be able to do your own legal work and you know that's like the first thing that YC told us like don't touch any of that there's people that do like four years in college to be able to do it properly just focus on you know making sure you actually sell something that people want uh, which is such a simple concept but it's so easy to start working on everything else but the right thing right uh, so that was like a big advantage um, and there's also after the you know, the, the money trajectory was a big thing, is uh, you get to some local accelerators that are kind of still at the stage of trying to make a name for themselves. Um, and you graduate from the accelerators called that, you know, graduate. Um, it doesn't give you any unfair advantage to raise more money after, right? So you're still kind of like, you raise maybe uh, at terms that are not necessarily the best, but after you're still stuck at this, you know, three months later, you don't necessarily have a more valid data point. You're just three months later, that's it, right? Uh, at the top accelerators, you actually benefit a lot from, from the brand, uh, and that helps to, act, to have meetings. 
it, it's a de-risker for a lot of the investors just because of their hit rate. So, you know, a lot of these companies that go through this accelerator or that accelerator, um, you know, they have a very good hit rate. Therefore, I'd, ra I'd rather invest in a company that has been through it because uh, they've done some of the work to remove the weeds, the bad weeds already. So you want to be, you know, it's a positive bias. Uh, so these two things were really, you know, the main thing for us. Um, plus, we were really looking for a reason to come to California, obviously. <laughs> Enjoy the sun, but uh, now definitely mentorship and, and money. Uh, the top accelerators will most likely always have better terms than other uh, accelerators that are smaller. That's another thing. Yeah, I mean, I think you will hit all the major points. Uh, the other thing is uh, there's communities behind these accelerators and um, for instance, I, I couldn't raise a dime I guess I could, but it was really bad terms, uh, before Y Combinator. Um, and, you know, just, it's, investors invest in, in uh, lines, not dots, and they, there's a lot, you know, such thing called herd mentality. Um, so, you know, imagine, like, putting yourself in an investor's shoes, you're not, you, you want to fall on with, like, someone that knows their shit, uh, like Y Combinator or Techstars or any of the others. Um, so, just from that perspective, funding from the funding perspective, it's it's really powerful, uh, makes it a little a lot easier uh, than not. And then from the second one, it's then the other one is of course the mentorship that Kilo uh, talked about. But that's really that's all I have to add. Yeah, I think Doug hit on a really good point. I think funding and the name that came with five hundred really helped us out a lot. So. As we're going through 500 and even after, um, just with investors knowing that we're a 500 company, um, I think we got a lot better deals. Our our cap value went up, and and it just it just felt when talking to investors, it felt a lot better for us. Uh, mentorship was important. Um, obviously, the 500 mentors and then the mentors they brought in was really big for us, um, just because they had such a good network out in the Bay Area and just everywhere, New York, Chicago, LA, they had such great network everywhere that we were talking to people from all over the place. Um, perks was a big thing for us as we were first starting out. Um, you know, getting free Amazon for a year, like that sounds like nothing, but my, we're still getting it free. Oh my gosh, like that's saving us so much money. Um, Things like that are awesome. Um, another thing that we love about 500 is the family feel. Um, it really feels like a family. It's, it's super weird. So when we went in, um, we would have dinners all the time with people. We just got to know them really well. And even to this day, I, I feel like I keep in touch with so many people. Chrysalis went up um, and met up with our point of contact at that time. She's now a partner at 500. Um, she was just up there in LA with her yesterday. And they had dinner, and, and they were discussing what we need to do coming forward. So. Even, even then, like, it's a family feel, and, and we feel like they can always help us out. And I think for Crystal, um, Crystal's big thing with 500, she was pushing 500 from the get-go. Um, and Crystal's always the boss in this partnership. The one for us. <laughs> yeah, and so I think Crystal's story is that she had done research, and Dave McClear, the founder of 500, had done a talk, I think, about families and how even if you're a parent, you can still start a business, and they're really supportive with that. And just everything with like the support and um, their belief systems and everything that comes with it, I think we believe in 500, and, and that's where we felt comfortable. Um, I think that was the biggest thing for us with 500 startups that we love. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think also a lot of them probably want to know, what does it take now to get in? Because I know that every year it gets harder and harder. The KPIs, you know, the metrics, it, it just takes more and more. So at this point, like knowing that you've gone through sort of your batch, especially you, from your time, not that you're so old, but what is it now that it's sort of, of course like it, everything depends, that that's usually the answer, but what is sort of, what are, you, what are you seeing there just so you can get in? Yeah, I'll take this first part since I need to leave soon and I'm a slacker. Um, but 
Crystal can probably speak a lot better with the KPIs and metrics, um, kind of what you need to hit with revenues and followers if you have an app, um, but and user and users. But I think what I can speak to with um, we so we went through five startups. And then we ended up doing their distro program too recently. And I think one of the really important things for the distro program was the team. Um, and that's one of the things that I think is so important as, as I felt. Like, I, I undervalued team, I think, when we first started. I'm like, ah, uh, we have a good engineer and us, we should be good. Um, but it's not just skill. I think a lot of it is, like, meshing personalities and making sure that, um, like, people that you bring on have the same drive and tenacity as you do. I mean, that's the one thing that we struggled with in the beginning, that uh, we brought on some people that did not have the same drive. They had the skill level, but their drive and tenacity were not there, um, and we ended, up to, we ended up having to part ways with them. So I think team is a really big thing, and um, when I was up in LA doing distro, that was huge for 500's distro, was looking at the team, making sure the team was there all the time, um, understanding the team and making sure that the team was cohesive. I, I, I would observe the mentors and they would always observe the teams. Like there are teams that would just argue and fight in front of the mentors and it was so bad for them. Um, and at the end of it, we would talk to the mentors and one of the mentors, I remember it saying, you know, the one thing that we, the, the thing that we love most about Pro Sky is not only your product, but that your team was cohesive. That you guys all were on the same page. You guys were always, to, you guys were always pushing each other to be better. Um, and you guys just knew what you're doing. So I think that's one of the really big things that they're looking at now is your team and your ability to hire well. Um, not just the core team, but after that, are you able to hire well? Um, which we also ran to, we, which we learned a lot of lessons with that, I think. Um, but learning how to hire well was um, a good lesson to learn, and I think that's a really big part of getting in from what I've seen. And then I'm sure Chris can speak to other stuff too if she wants to. Uh, I think uh, the most important thing is just a team, simply put. Uh, they look for uh, people that are perseverant in iterating and just launching quick. Um, like you don't, uh, clearly you don't need to have like this, a stellar prototype or anything like that, uh, but you need to uh, demonstrate that you know how to build a, a good product or at least demonstrate uh, that you have the mindset and you can answer their questions. Because when, when you're in there, it's just a barrage of questions, and it's 10 minutes, and it's really stressful. Um, so it's you got to think on your feet, and whoever comes out, you know, is usually true. If you don't have a lot of time to think about it, so uh, it's just number one characteristic I think for that they look for is just per perseverance and uh, understanding your product and the market. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny because I, I actually think it it is changing a little bit. Um, it used to be all about, you know, like team traction and target market. And, you know, the more boosted all these three things are, it, the easier it's going to be to, you know, to enter the accelerator. But I almost feel like now target market is changing towards impact. Like you don't even need necessarily anymore to have like necessarily a big, big market. But if it's like impactful, um, you can actually get them interested a lot. Like, you know, actually impactful, like very bold ideas. I remember. I remember in our batch, I felt so useless. Like, you know, we build like a boxing product. Um, and there's like people that are building um, airplanes that go 1.7 times as fast <laughs> as all the planes that exist today. And then there's like this, yeah. And there, there's like, um, what was that? The space relativity or whatever. Yeah. There, there, 3D printed rockets, you know, at like 2% of the cost of what it costs to, to print, a, you know, to build a rocket today. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm pitching this boxing product. But, but, you know, what I think they liked again, right, coming back to it is the team. But the thing is, like, usually you don't really control the team or the market because it's already kind of chosen by the time you apply. Like, that's my team and that's my market. Like, I already decided that. You can, you can pitch a bigger vision, that's fine, but... I think at the end of the day, and the more, the more important ones, at the end of the day, it's still about money. Like, you know, they invest to, and to make a return. So whatever has traction will always get them interested. Like, you're gonna be a shitty team coming from I don't know where, with no background, no technical, whatever. If your things are growing fast, everyone will be interested. Like, that's the number one thing that was always, you know, common to everyone. Um, and, you know, we had like a, I remember we had a, a talk from, from Ron, Ron Conway, who was like an early investor in Facebook. 
And he was like, do you realize how I didn't know anything about social media? Like, he's an old guy. He's like, you know, 70 years old or something. And he was like, I just, I was like, I can't even understand why people are using this. But their growth curve was just so amazing that he's like, of course, I'm going to invest, right? So they don't even have to understand anything, but like growth and revenues that will always trump all the rest. And I think after that, it comes directly to teams. And it's, it's kind of like unfortunate, but it's going to give you an advantage if you're three guys from you know, Stanford uh, and they're all technical and you all sold another startup for $500 million. Like you're going to get funded, you know? Like that's an ideal case, of course. Uh, but there is a bias towards you know, the Ivy League schools, the top schools, or your past when it comes as an entrepreneur. Uh, it's not needed though, right? So I didn't have any you know, uh, background as entrepreneurs. Uh, a lot of the people that I met in both accelerators didn't have some, but it definitely helps. Um, and then impact, imp impacts, you know, how impactful can, can the idea be, like the boldness of the idea, I feel has like a, a lot more space in the decision as compared to before. So, um, you know, like a lot more nonprofits are getting funded and, you know, projects that doesn't necessarily even will bring necessarily a high return. But if they're really able to pull it off, it's going to be amazing. Like they're ready to take some risk on these type of ideas, I feel. Okay, so I'm going to pause for a second because Matt has an investor meeting. So I'm going to say bye to Matt. Bye, Matt. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you, you, you nailed it, right? It's, I mean, um, Traction trumps everything, always. Um, team, every, every, every accelerator is going to say it's team, team, team. That's what we say at Techstars. Um, and, you know, market, product, team, again. Um, but I also think there's some practical things you can do. Um, so, I mean, Techstars is a little bit different than Y Combinator 500 in that, like, we have, like, 30 locations around the globe. We don't have, you know, we don't have a, a location in, in the Bay Area. And then we have like really small classes, or 10, per, 10 companies per class. Is how big are the classes at, at YC or, or 500? They're like 103. Yeah. So like, you know, they're much smaller classes. So like one of the things, you know, everyone's going to apply to the big cities. Like people, like tons of people apply to New York, tons of people apply to LA, tons of people apply to London. Fewer people are going to apply to smaller markets. And so you have a much greater chance of getting into a tech stars if you apply to a smaller market. Now it means you have to pack up and leave for three months, but you get to be part of this global program that is run incredibly well, and you're gonna come out of the program way better off than, than in, you know, having not got into it. So thinking, thinking about applying to, to some of the smaller markets is, is always a good idea. Um, I'd also say apply early, right? Like for us, our applications close April 9th. We're, we're gonna get half of the applications on the 6th, 7th, and 8th. And it's insane, right? Like, how are you able to possibly go through all those applications in a very short amount of time? You, you get a short shrift, right? Like you said earlier, investors invest in lines, not dots, right? So if you apply, what that means is like, you apply on the 9th, you're a dot. You're, you're a single point of contact. That's one instance where the investor has seen you or heard about you. But if you're coming to these events and they keep seeing you showing up, um, or you've shown up a couple times and, and you got on their radar, then you have a better chance of standing out when it's time to make those cuts. Um, so, you know, not being annoying, but being, not, you know, persistent or showing up. Um, and I think a third thing, you know, you talked about, you know, investors use heuristics and it's kind of, it's kind of BS, right? There's a lot of bias in, in the space, you know, but if you understand what the biases are, you know, take advantage of them, right? Like, right. I didn't graduate from Stanford, I'm non-technical, I can't take advantage of that one. But what I do know is, is investors uh, use like trusted friends and resources as a, as a heuristic. So like they want to get introductions from people in their network that they trust, whether that means fellow investors or entrepreneurs in their portfolio companies, because they, tr you know, they trust those people. And, and so if you can get an introduction from someone you know in who's a YC alum or, or a 500 alum or a Techstars alum or someone in that network that's connected to any of those accelerators, I guarantee that the MD or the, the managing partner, whoever, you know, at any of those accelerators is going to take a look. You're not necessarily going to get in, but they're at least going to give your application a hard look. 
and you know, and I, you know, it's 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 like the best odds you have is 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 getting one of those introductions. Well said. Um, but um, I, you know, I, I think personally, I think for right now, um, traction is probably one of the most important, and here's why. We, our batch was 11, we were like two years ago, and back then um, they actually told us the first day, they said that we had over 4,000 applicants and we were one of 26 that was picked. Fast forward two years, they're having double if not triple the amount of applications. Um, yes, they've doubled the number of size, so I think they're right now 50, what was your batch? Um, yeah, 50. Right, 50. So they doubled the numbers, but the applications have also doubled or tripled, right? So you really have to stand out. Traction is one of the easiest ways to stand out. When I say traction, I don't just mean revenues. Um, it could be traffic. It could be downloads, right? There's different kinds of traction. And here's why traction is important, too. It's not just because the accelerator is looking for traction. The reason why they're called an accelerator is that three to four months, um, it's okay. you can accelerate your growth. And so by that time, you should have already figured out who you're selling to, what you're selling, um, and how you're going to be selling it. And if you don't figure that out and you somehow get accepted to a great accelerator program, you're just doing yourself a disservice because in those three to four months, instead of growing rapidly, you're actually going to spend time, your head, you know, in the ground and trying to figure out exactly what product you're selling. And I can almost guarantee it that at the end, you're not going to be successful. Um, and so I know traction is important. I've, I've introduced a lot of startups to 500 and um, they flat out, they tell me like, if, if they don't have traction, don't bother. Um, and I agree that referrals is a big deal. Um, I know when we were applying, I was cold calling founders that I don't know. And some of these are pretty big founders and I have no idea. I'm like, they're probably going to think I'm nuts. Right. Um, I, I called them, I got on the phone with them and I told them how awesome I was. And I was like, you know what? You need to email them. And can you BCC me on it? <laughs> they, they probably thought I was nuts, but I probably had four or five different startups email 500 about us. And I believe wholeheartedly that that's what helped us. And it's the same thing. Um, you know, I've been through the program. We've raised successfully. They know who we are. They follow us, you know, three times now on, on different rounds. And and so I think to a certain extent, hopefully, um, they do trust our instincts. Um, and so when I do bring someone to them, I, and I don't bring everyone to them, right? I, I get emails all the time, every week, you know, from people like, can you intro me? And to be honest, if I don't know you and you just ask me to intro, I'm not going to do that. We so, did. well, I, I spent time, like, convincing them, and I think that's what's important. You need to spend the time to actually get on a call with them and tell them, you know, and explain what your product is and get them to like your product. And people have done that with me before, and I fall in love with that product, and I'm like, dang, I wish I thought of it. Um, and I, I want to intro them because I think they could be successful, right? And so that's really important. Yeah, just one more thing. I Actually, just on the subject, I don't know how much time we have. Just feel free to um, to cut me if necessary. But like once you, you know, like uh, getting in the next, you know, like it's not gonna make or break your business for sure. And like people used to think that, oh my God, you you get into YC and then they they teach you the the secret ways of you know the Shaolins and bang, and then you just sell your business. Honestly, it's really not like that. What they they just they realign you a lot, they give you a network, but at the end of the day, you kind of realize very quickly that I'll have to do the work. Um, and not needing to go to an accelerator is the best thing ever. And getting, getting in like at a later stage will give you awesome privileges because once you get in, you know, the, the next success metric, you know, and it's not really a good success metric, but it's still very present in the minds of, uh, of all the founders is like how much money I'm gonna raise and you know from who um, and if you're a late stage founder you'll be treated a lot better than if you just get in somehow by like twisting the system and you're able to get in like that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have a good experience in the accelerator like people that are later stage will build much better relationships with the partners of that accelerator they'll be always presented uh, and they'll come up in a conversation a lot more with investors as well 
And once everyone presents on Demo Day, um, you know, nobody says, for how long have you been in business? No, nobody cares. So even if you had like two more years to, you know, of work behind you, you're still presenting as the, at the same time as the early stage company. And you're going to look a lot better because you're going to have more revenues, more growth, a, more, a much more solid team. You're going to be more structured. And that plays a lot. So, it, you know, personally, if I would have to do it all over again, I would, I would wait. I would apply still, you know, because, you know, you give them data points and that's very important. But if I can get in late compared to everyone else in the batch, I'm going to be very competitive. As like everyone else will be like still trying to find, um, you know, their way to growth or maybe they'll be at the beginning of their growth curve and will be full steam and on demo day will stand out. And that's where you get, you know, the big investors behind you. Cool. So that was, that was going to be my next question was, what was your biggest learning coming out of uh, your accelerator? Like, what, what, what did you say, oh my gosh, I can't, like that was, it just completely changed the course of your business or, or your life, whatever it is. Like, what is that one thing that you feel like that accelerator did for you? Um, I did it, but I, I... I think just seeing the experience of my batchmates and ourselves, um, getting to know the mentors, getting to like really getting to know them and talking to them and getting them to you know be champions of who you are is so important. Um, I we've we've gotten introductions to investors um, because of that. Um, until this day, I'm still calling them and I'm still asking for advice. I still ask for help and I get help. I ask for intros and I get intros. Um, I just had a batchmate text me literally yesterday um, and she's fundraising right now um, they they were a little they were much later um, and so she she didn't start fundraising till later um, and she was saying you know I, I, I need intros to these investors and I'm like oh this partner at 500 eight she she knows all of these people um, and then she said like, okay I'll, I'll, I'll email her and then 10 minutes later she's like she's not gonna intro me like she hates me I didn't even talk to her and I'm like, eh, yeah, well, you kind of duck your own grave, you know, for that. I, I, I can't really help you in that realm. I can't build that relationship for you. Um, and so it was something that I initially hated. Um, we were put in the exact same room where Christine and Dave and everyone else was. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like my life is over. I have to be every day. I have to make sure I'm working. Like they don't see me working. They don't easy. Um, but it was the best thing that happened to us. I stepped out of my comfort zone and started talking to them. I, I, I'm not like that. I, I'd rather just be at home watching TV or doing something by myself. And I had to come out and I had to find common ground with people I may not have common ground with. Um, I, I brought treats. That helps at 500. Um, you know, you do what you can to build a relationship. And I think that's with everything in business. <laughs> um, I think the by far the most important thing you hit on it is like it, is not the three months you're in the program it's it's the next 10 20 years of your life once you're out of the program it's that network it's the people that are going to continue to open doors for you the rest of your life um, you surround yourself with good people and you're never going to fail and I, I think that's something you learn quickly, you forget all the shit you learn in the program. Like, they're gonna teach you all these things and you're gonna forget it three months later. Just like school, like who remembers what anything from school? You know, you remember, you remember the people. Um, I think that was, you know, the most important thing, but if there's one thing that, that really changed our business, it, it actually was a lesson, it was an introduction. We'd been around two years um, and it was simultaneously, I met Tony Shea, the founder of Zappos, and, and got his book and read his book. And that same time, that same summer, we were in Accelerate Labs. Um, we had a, a session on mission, vision, values. And once we had figured out our mission, vision, values, like our business just completely changed. And we were able to attract like top talent, amazing people, and it just completely changed the trajectory. So um, that was the only thing I think I remembered from the program, but it was, it was a game changer for us. Um, for us, you know, especially being like a hardware product, I just, I, let me just get, yeah. all right, um, yeah, I used to think that um, you only had one shot to launch a company, like you can't launch a company multiple times, but it actually, you know, you, you can, 
and people do it all the time and they just relaunch right? and they relaunch and they relaunch again the third product that is the same product and they just they make it again this big PR push and so you get to like I used to think that it was like this okay when we're ready like you know you have to be ready to have like this one shot which is very not true um, and you know going through the program just like opened opened up our eyes that um, just sell it just like start start being start being you know start being impatient a little bit like you don't actually need the product even to sell it you can actually sell renderings which is something that I didn't know you could, you could actually do uh, but, but it happens that you know Kickstarter companies um, that do well most likely really it's actually a rendering okay yeah um, so being impatient with sales has probably been like the highest thing that stuck in my mind during the program um, and realize that burning bridges is is really something that you know I shouldn't have been afraid of because um, nobody really cares like I used to think that oh my god if you go to this big company and you show them your product and your product is not perfect that's it like they'll never want to hear from you again which is just not true you know like they'll buy the product when they want the product it's that's it and you know uh, obviously you don't want to there's limits to this concept but you have a lot of freedom to test the market before building anything and I think that's really one thing that stuck with us is like just sell what you think can sell with the method and the channel you think can sell and most likely you'll get it wrong but you'll know that like a lot sooner um, then doing all this work about you know taking your time and making sure every step is perfect etc etc like you, you lose so much time and then you realize that you know this assumption that you made about you know who would want to, your product is actually not even true like it's you know you thought this person would be a buyer for sure but then you know it ends up that you know they don't really care about the product however what you didn't know is like that other person who you didn't even realize existed they love it right and that's the people who you should be building the product for for example um so you know it really swift switch, switched our mentality from like a sales first perspective and it honestly probably saved our companies uh three or four times um just on the verge of running out of money um but was just able to close you know more sales uh or you know close like a few lois with you know franchise gyms and stuff that we completely don't didn't even think of but all, all of that happened because you we tried to sell the product even before building the whole product basically um, so that was like uh, definitely I'm pretty sure that saved our you know our entrepreneur uh, path um, um, if there's one thing you would do differently what would it be within the last you know since the beginning of your company I would have, you know, I waited two years for launching. I would have launched within the first three months. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to do for all my next companies. Um, verifying demand first was, was such a simple concept that I knew about. Like, it's very easy to know about a concept, but like, just not apply it, thinking you're applying it. Um, but being forced to applying it, like, opened really my eyes on like, everything happens really only when you try, you know, to actually reach the end goal, like not actually preparing yourself to maybe at some point sprint. You just go for it. And um, I know it sounds like super cliche, just go for it, you know, just do it. Um, but actually selling um, just taught us so much. Um, yeah, like I, I, could, I could speak about this for like an hour, so I'm gonna stop here, but like so many things were wrong about our, our thinking of what, how we would sell this thing like so many things and you know we're still learning every week I'm like man like the market doesn't react like people are stupid you know like we put this promotion it's just that they don't care so, and um yeah you really you really realize that you know you're such a like everyone's trying to sell to everyone and being able to stand out off of like you know all the commercials and the ads and like everything that we hear about us is super hard to be able to be the one that people will invest 200 bucks on, you know? Um, so yeah, you know, sales first and product 
after. Weirdly enough, that's my way of thinking now. I, pr I probably wouldn't have uh, underestimated the little guys, the competitors that are coming into the space. So, like when we started, there was fewer than five crowdfunding platforms. There was us and Indiegogo and a few others that ended up going out of business. And it took a while for crowdfunding to catch on, but as it did, I mean, it was like accelerators, right? There's, it started off with YC and Techstars, and now there's a billion accelerators. It's the same thing in the crowdfunding space. And maybe around 2011, 2012, a, a tiny little crowdfunding platform came into the space, kind of doing the exact same thing that we were doing in the medical space. Um, and we kind of saw it and we looked at it and showed our board and we said, you know, don't worry about it, it's just two guys in a garage. <laughs> They're the most dangerous, these guys in the garage. The site looked terrible. It looked like our site had the years ago when, when we got into te uh, Techstars, Sam had told us we had the shittiest website he'd ever seen and that's how theirs looked now. So we didn't worry about it. Um, and, and, and they're the company that ended up acquiring us the other day. <laughs> so, so, so I would have I paid attention to the little guy, I think, because um, sometimes they can figure it out, uh, you know, <laughs> sooner, sooner than you do. Um, I think for us, it was, we need more attention to, to the, the, the back end of our website and um, what was propelling it and what the stats were. And we didn't focus on that too much at the beginning. Uh, we actually were very into sales. I'm just going to sell the product. We need to have the hockey curve. And we did have the hockey curve. Um, halfway through, though, we actually took a month off from selling because we realized what a mess our whole back end was. And we had to take a step back. And we had to like make sure we were doing you know, amplitude or kiss metrics or whatever you guys are using. We had to do it right. Um, because we really needed to understand our numbers and why we were growing. Um, and I, I kind of wish we did that at the beginning um, because that would have saved us so much more time. We probably would have grown so much faster because of it. Um, just at the beginning, you just don't think that's important. Um, and that's something I wish I had spent more time on. All right. So in the interest of time, because I know that some of us have to leave too and have families and have jobs to get back to, so um, I'm going to go close up with announcements. Um, I can start and we can kind of go, go around because I think we all kind of have our own thing that we kind of want to let you know. So People Space does have a uh, pre-accelerator, which is a pie lab, and all of these awesome people here are part of our mentors, and our mentors are only from um, one of these three accelerators and for all these reasons that they had just described. And um, so thank you so much again for for being my friend and being here, and it's 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 been Amazing. Um, so the pre accelerator is a six month program, and it really is goes. It, it's um, really here to get you from ideation to execution. We have a pre product group and a post product group, so it really depends on sort of where you are. It's very customizable. I'm not going to go any further, but if you guys have any other questions, you can go on the website. It's peoplespace.us/pilab, and um, I, that's my announcement. So, Crystal. Yeah, sign up for the pre accelerator program, but. Uh, <laughs> Application ends tonight. So, oh, application ends tonight for 500. So make sure you apply if you are ready. It's it's the lines, not the dots. All right, I'd say the same thing. All right, it's up on the board. Uh, Techstars Los Angeles the applications close April 9th. Um, I'll leave some business cards here. Um, we're in like crunch mode right now, so I can't guarantee I'll respond right away, but I will try to respond if you if you email me. So if this stock was depressive and you actually want to join a startup, applicants are, are still open. Um, and <laughs> I'm going to do the same. I'm going to leave some cards here. Uh, you know, uh, feel free to reach out to me if, um, you know, for anything, even though you don't want to apply, you just want to talk. Happy to talk to you guys and, uh, you know, get the, ball, get the ball rolling. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.